another day on the Triumph. Yeah, so last time we sort of vaguely test drove it, it was running really bad. And uh, we figured out why. <laughs> the main boot on the supercharger here uh, had come off because when we were doing the mount for the intercooler here, we were flexing it around a bunch and it popped off and then we just got excited and forgot about it. Um, so we put that back on and it seems to be running better. We're gonna put some seats in it, build a throttle cable, and maybe a clutch guard, and then we can probably take it for a proper test drive. Let's check out these seats. <laughs> yeah, that's the part that we're all waiting for. That's the part we've been super stoked about. <laughs> oh, we've got pieces of Camaro in here. Set those out. When we were talking to the Corbeau guys, they said, they have a bunch of small seats for smaller cars. These are actually meant for something along the lines of like a Miata or a small Corvette. And these are the A4s. That's that's good, we need small. Yep. Although this is a lot smaller than a Miata, so. <laughs> we might need to do some altering. <laughs> oh yeah. These look so much better than they did in the pictures. Yeah, and they look pretty sweet in the pictures yeah. too. I don't feel qualified to touch this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, those look good. Really good. Adjustment yep. Yeah. Yeah, so we got the foldable seat. As Edmund's learned with his with his drift car, it really sucks not having adjustable seats. Yeah, and it also really sucks not having seat sliders. We're gonna have to modify them a little bit to fit. Yeah. Let's, uh... These are their one inch universal mounts. Hold it up a little bit there. <laughs> oh this shoot. This is problematic. So, given that these seats do not fit, our best plan of action here is to basically chop out the entire driveline tunnel and make, a, make the seats fit and then build a new tunnel uh, that's smaller. Because right here, like even on this side where the driveline's closer to it, we could still, we could move it like a solid two plus inches closer to the center of the car, which means it would clear better out here, and then it could also lean back a little bit so that, you know, your head would be lower, and it could sit down a little lower, so. We'll start by chopping out the driveline tunnel and then see where we're at. So in the interest of not dying when we drive this, we also got five-point harnesses. These are the uh, cam lock five-point harness, so they've just got this little clipper lock quick release thing here, you just, Clip everything into it. So nice. So there you have it. That's a harness. Now we need to build a roll cage to attach it to. Sure do. <laughs> first things first, let's get these seats in here. Oh yeah. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Look at all that room. After consulting with the hard top, there is just no way. You know, it's not like 100% necessary. We could just build a roll cage and never use the hard top. But it means your head would be way above the windshield, which means any roll cage built would look absolutely stupid if it was safe. So we need smaller seats. So unfortunately, the A4s just aren't going to fit. But we talked to the guys at Corbo and they still want to see the seats in one of our projects. They're super cool, so they're down to just let us keep them and wait on putting them in something else. And we will be able to use the five-point harness in here when we set up our roll cage, which will be super cool. 
So for now, we'll wrap these up, keep them clean, or figuring out what to put them in, and let's get this thing ready to test drive. So we tried to get this thing off with other tools. That didn't quite work. Nope. So the choice should have been obvious from the beginning. Definitely should have. So when in doubt, we get the grinder out, and we're just gonna take off the, the shaft down here and make a new one. We'll just get what we need. Yeah. Really easy to fit the grinder in here. There we go. And it should be pretty easy to just, we'll take this pin out and then we'll just be able to, that's the only mount point, and then we'll just have to build a little plate for it to stop and we'll reuse the spring. And we'll be in business. So we're making a bump stop that's adjustable, because why not? So then what, what we'll be able to do is just make sure we don't snap the cable off the throttle. Oh, we're gonna get some, some dirt kicking up here in a second. <laughs> About the flappy disc though. We're spending a lot of time together today. <laughs> so the pedal's in and working. We got the spring hooked up. We got the pedal stop hooked up. So we just scratched the plate and we welded it right down to the body and we have that adjustable uh, bolt on the top. So we got, uh, yeah, the full setup now. Taking the gearbox apart here for the Triumph, and we have these new gears for it. Um, this is the smallest gear I could get for the bottom, and the largest one I could get for the top. So that'll give us the uh, highest gearing possible in this box. What I don't know is if the chain's still going to fit. The chain might now be too long, so we'll have to find out. So we decided to go ahead and do some modifications so that we can test out this gear ratio and see if it's any good. All we really have to do is cut out a little bit more of a notch there for this to slide farther, and then get a longer bolt, which we don't have a longer bolt, so we're gonna thread this one. Got room to slide it now, get the chain tight. So we'll get all the metal filings out of there and put it back together. So it was a bit rainy out, so we got the hard top on. Everything else is kind of ready to go. Yep, we started it up, make sure it's running good. Sounds good, so uh, time to send it. So it turns out we have reverse. <laughs> and then this is just a temporary clutch guard so that I can't stick my feet in the clutch. And in case the belt blows up or the clutch blows up, it won't just like explode right into my foot. Is it um, frightening? Like not in terms of fast, just in terms of the handling. Like I drifted that corner and it was just like ah! all over the place <laughs> and deafening. Um, also still slow in terms of the RPMs, but that's, I mean, it's better than it was definitely. Uh, 
but uh, I also, well, on my driveway and it wasn't running 100%, but it may just be running out of gas. Anyway, with the limitations of what I could do, I couldn't really see what it, how fast it went when it actually revved out, because it was just like, just barely getting into the RPMs, but um, it definitely needs some muffling because, uh, you know, like a normal car, you could just cruise along at 1500 RPMs. No, this one, like, it engages at 4000. <laughs> so 4000 RPM is your minimum cruising speed. <laughs> and then if you want to accelerate, you're at like seven and a half, so. Well, it seems like nothing broke, so that's no, pretty good. Yeah, nothing broke. Um, we just need to stir up some gas, which Let's do it. we don't have any. We literally have no extra gas right now. Well, is there premium in the jack? <laughs> nope, it's empty. We've already siphoned all that out. <laughs> all right. My car's empty as well. I can siphon it out of my Audi, but it's on E. I got premium on half tank right now. <laughs> <laughs> so we are currently open for race gas sponsorship. So if you guys know anybody, send us an email. In the meantime, the best gas we got is premium <laughs> from Sam's Daily Drive. I'll make it back to the gas station, hopefully. <laughs> so we got our fuel line. We've got a fuel pump battery so it turns out anti-siphon devices work but that doesn't really matter because we got bigger problems anyways well maybe uh, I've been looking at it and I think that the supercharger belt isn't staying tight enough and it's slipping uh, so I think that's why it's not running running right you can oh, see wow. it just tweaks it yeah and so it's already kind of loose to start with you can see here it's got a little bit of play there and we don't have room to tension it a lot more but even if we did as soon as it's pulling on it it pulls it and makes it even looser so i think that might be why it's like it's running great at idle and at lower rpms and then when it gets to higher rpms it's trying to build boost and it doesn't we've got some tuning to do some things to fix and we need some more gas so that's it for this episode but we'll be back we'll uh fix some things, finish some things, and then go drive it some more. And make a clutch guard. That would help. Yeah, Drop and it. some kind of muffling device. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, it'd be nice to get it running better first, but part of it not running right is probably the exhaust. So we'll start working on that soon too. That's gonna be a long project. Sorry guys, that's all we had time for this week, but next week we're gonna be doing everything we can do to get this thing running right. But in the meantime, my wife, you guys probably know her as the girl, she translates all of the videos into Spanish, so you could thank her for that. And she's starting a language learning channel where you can learn Spanish. And there's also a lot of videos on there for just language learning tips in general. So you wanna go check that out. The link's in the description. Thanks guys.